The following is a sponsored program paid for by First Alliance Credit Union. Welcome to Good Money Moves featuring Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell with Jenna Tobble, AVP of Marketing at First Alliance Credit Union. Hi, Jenna. Hello, Andy. Last week... We talked all about fixing your credit Mm -hmm. and credit scores and all of that business. Yes. What will we explore this week on Good Money Moves? Yes. Today we are talking about another very important topic, and that is frauds, scams, and all the red flags that you need to watch out for when it comes to these. There are so many. It's just terrifying. It is. And yeah, it's constant constant. And unfortunately, as technology advances, you would like to think that it becomes harder for scammers, but scammers are getting smarter alongside that technology and coming up with whole new ways to steal your money and impersonate you um, and steal your information. So, however, there are also a lot of ways to protect yourself from fraud. So today we're going to take some time to kind of break down some actionable steps that people can take to protect themselves and talk about some of the common scams that are still happening. Even though technology advances, the scams just change right along with them, although they're all still kind of the same at heart. Um, So we are going to discuss a little bit about what to do if you have fallen victim to a scam as well. Okay. What kills me about this is the amount of effort and brain power that goes into executing these scams. Yeah. The, the people behind it, if they would direct all of this energy towards something productive, mm-hmm. I bet they'd be fairly successful. Right. Yeah. I agree. Oh, I agree. Gosh. <laughs> well, scams, obviously, if you follow the news at all, can happen to anyone. Yes. Many of us know family members or good friends who have fallen for it because they're getting more and more sophisticated. I remember not that long ago receiving an email from Amazon that looked completely realistic, mm-hmm. saying there was a problem with my account, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And yep. I it almost got me. And yeah. then I went, well, wait a minute. This is the wrong email account. This shouldn't be. Yeah. It's, my Amazon account is tied to this email account, not this, my work account. And I went, oh, that was close. Yeah, they're tricky. They're okay. tricky. So maybe to start out with, Jenna, can we talk about the, I guess, the most popular types of fraud scams that are out there and circulating? Yeah, yep. So there's, I think, several scams that you probably hear about the most. Um, especially in recent years. And I would say the top ones that people should really be mindful for when it comes to fraud and scams is number one, phone scams. These are really common and do tend to target older adults. Um, Scammers basically call pretending to be the IRS or maybe a tech company or even a family member in distress sometimes, all in an effort to try to get your personal and financial information. I got to tell you a true story. My dear mother-in-law who passed away earlier this year at age 90 and probably about six months before she passed away, she was still sharp as a whip. She receives a call from a scammer who's claiming to be my son. Oh gosh. Yeah. And that he's in trouble and he's in jail and needs money to be bailed out. (laughs) And and this is great because Joanne's response was, this isn't Jerry. There's no way. Cause he'd know he'd <laughs> never call me to get bail money. Cause I wouldn't give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. <laughs> yeah. Those, those family member in distress scams are especially heartbreaking because they're really are taking advantage of people who are, just want to be helpful. Um, which leads me to another very common scam, and that's romance scams. Um, these are unfortunately increasing with more and more online dating activity and just access to people through means like Facebook and things like that. Um, scammers will create these fake profiles and then develop 
like virtual relationships with their victims, usually ultimately kind of accumulating the relationship into this huge ask for funds for this, you know, devastating reason. Um, and then once they get the money, they just disappear. And then people are left like wondering what happened. Um, another really common scam uh, is, of course, credit card scams. These happen when, you know, someone gets a hold of your credit card information and then they start to make unauthorized purchases using your card, sometimes even before you realize what's happening. Um, tech support scams kind of similar to the one one you were just talking about with Amazon, Andy, right? This is when yeah. someone claims either claims that you have an issue with an account or that you have a virus on your computer um, and then you click and then you somehow give them either access to your computer or access to your personal data. Um, in, in some cases, if you click the button, you end up installing malware on your computer, which um, can lock down your files or, or delete your files or hold, they'll hold your information ransom. Those are called ransomware attacks. Um, so lots of different variations of all of these. But um, and then, of course, there's the lottery or prize scams, too. You'll get like an, a call or an email saying that you've won some big sum of money or a, or a fancy vacation or something. But before you can claim the prize, you have to pay the taxes or the fees up front for it. And they'll take your take your money and your credit card information and be gone. And you didn't actually win a prize. So yeah, lots, lots of them out there. <laughs> They're insidious. They're evil. They are. They really They're, are. And you were the romance scams. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that many months ago. We had a guest person on the show who one of your coworkers who yeah. is more, I would call an expert on these scams and he just, brilliantly described how these things work and yes how mm -hmm. how easily people can be victimized locally yeah. and i'm not going to name where or th anything else but it's been in the news not that too long long ago mm -hmm. uh southeastern minnesota woman got taken by one of these in the tune of i believe hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars mm -hmm. and yes. this poor this poor woman to meet this person's demands was in a position of authority in a local company and embezzled from the company mm. to send this person money, not only, yeah. you know, wrecking her finances and her character and putting a serious criminal mark on her record, mm -hmm. it bankrupted the company that she worked for and put a whole bunch of people out of work. Yeah. And I mean, that just goes to show you how believable some of these scammers can be and how easy it can be to be tricked into doing things. It's scary. Okay. It's really scary. So you mentioned the phone scams. What are, yeah. what are some of the tricks, common tricks that they might employ to try to get people? Yeah. So phone scams are t really effective because scammers create this sense of urgency around the, the ask. And you're right. They might tell you that your account has been hacked or that there's a problem with your taxes and, they use a lot of fear and pressure and intimidation to get you to act quickly without thinking or asking any questions. Like, so some red flags to think about are if you are being pressured to act fast, like the caller might say to you, you have to act immediately or you're going to face these really serious consequences, like your bank account will be frozen um, they might request um, personal information from you. They might ask for things like your social security number, credit card information, passwords um, to verify you. You know, these are all things that a legitimate organization is not going to ask you for over the phone if they made contact with you first. Um, and then also, you know, if the if the offer seems like too good to be true, um, this is especially true um, if you get one of those calls. It's like, oh, you won a vacation to wherever, right? If they tell you you've won something amazing, but you need to pay first, it red flag. That is a scam. Luckily, there are ways that you can protect yourself in these situations, right? So staying calm is probably the best thing you can do for yourself. Don't even if the situation is real. Staying calm is still a great way to handle the situation. So if someone calls you out of the blue and asks for personal information, the best thing that you can do is hang up and then call the supposed company back directly using a number you know is the real number for that organization that you do business with. Um, like 
if if they're pretending to be your bank or your credit union calling, hang up, call the number on the back of your bank card or look up the, the correct number on the, their legitimate website and call back that way. Explain what just happened. Um, and most of the time they're going to tell you up front, yep, that was a scam or no, we really did try to reach out to you. Thanks for calling back, right? Like um, another thing that you can do is add your number to the national do not call registry. That'll help to reduce um, unwanted calls all around. Um, and if you have already fallen victim to a phone scam, the best thing that you can do is once you realize what happened, immediately contact your bank or your credit union if you, um, especially if you've given out financial information about your accounts, because they can immediately put a hold on your account or help you reset your banking password, um, issue you new cards and shut off the old ones so there's no funds um, being taken out of your account or attributed to a credit card. Um, and then, of course, reporting that scam to the Federal Trade Commission is also an important step if that does happen. Yeah. If, you're, if the cat's already out of the bag, you got to move mm -hmm. really, really fast. Yes. Okay. We do need to take a break. We're talking about scams and fraud, how to protect yourself, how to recognize a scam or fraud scheme on Good Money Moves with Jenna Topple with First Alliance Credit Union. Back in just a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking Good Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. It's Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell. Jenna Tobble's here with First Alliance Credit Union. Frauds and scams, the topic this week. And Jenna, you went through a, a bunch of different things that can be used to trick you, especially if it's a phone scammer. Maybe, do you have any real world examples you can talk about? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, more than is, you know, you care to admit it happens all the time. And it certainly happens to members at the credit union. It happens to people in your own community all the time. It's, um, and a lot of times what we do see um, is that our members, especially those with elderly parents, they, they are more likely to fall victim to things like phone scams um, or even technology scams just because they aren't as familiar with how these things work. Um, so we're going to call this particular member Jane Doe, but her grandmother actually noticed some unusual charges on a credit card that she had um, and brought this up to Jane. And she's like, I don't understand what these are. And after doing a little bit of digging and kind of talking to her grandmother, she realized um, that she'd been she had fallen victim to a phone scam. The scammer oh, no. pretended to be from her card issuing bank um, and then convinced her to verify her account with the card information. And then they were running up charges using her credit card. Um, and it's it really is a common situation, believe it or not. And there's many ways to get card information, too. You know, there's skimming devices, things like that. But people will call also um, and talk. We were talking about those phone scams before the break. Um, but really, the sad part about all this is scammers are preying on people's trust, especially those older adults again, who might not be as familiar with the warning signs or as familiar with how technology works. Um, and in this case, you know, the, the grandmother should have just hung up the phone and then called her bank directly and using the number on the back of the card to verify. Um, but what she didn't think about was they were pressuring her, you know, giving her a lot of those red flags that we talked about before the break, you know, saying, well, we need to verify this information right away. If you don't give us this information, you won't be able to use your card or you'll be charged fees like the very common red flags for this. But she was flustered and just wanted to get the call over with. So she gave him the information. Um, but. At the end of the day, no legitimate financial institution is going to ever ask you to verify your personal information over the phone like that, especially if they're the ones initiating that phone call. And that alone should be the red flag. If if someone is initiating outreach to you and then asking you to verify who you are, that should be immediately a red flag 
They already know who they're talking to. They reached out to you. <laughs> so just right. some things to, to think about. And I've seen on social media in response to news stories about these scams, mm-hmm. there's the inevitable, I can't believe they fell for it comment. And of I've course. talked to law enforcement about this topic many times. Yeah. And they will tell you these folks are doing it, are very skilled at what they do. Yeah. And they, they do things to purposely put you into a panic and then they'll just continue to apply the pressure and mm-hmm. try to confuse you and make you pivot so rapidly your head is spinning. Uh, yes. And, and they're very good at sounding like they care. We've had... um members who have fallen victim to scams where they're like, it was so legitimate. They were so nice and helpful on the phone. And we're like, well, that they still scammed you. Like yeah. it, it's wild it, to your point. It's just, it's crazy how good at manipulation these people are. And speaking of manipulation, romance scams, that's as about as manipulative as you can get. Yes. How do they yeah. usually operate? Yeah. Romance scammers, typically create fake profiles on dating sites or on social media and then they start chatting with people and those that start to engage with them they'll build these really emotional connections with them again through manipulation they always seem to know the right thing to say to kind of keep the conversation going they'll they'll pour out just a so much affection for this person and make just really build up their confidence and make them feel like some really seen even though they've never probably spoken with this person over the phone or seen them on a video call or even met them in person. They're really good at building these virtual emotional connections with their victims, usually because their victims are so desperate for romance, right? And once they've earned the trust of of their victims, they start asking for money. And sometimes it's small little asks here and there. Sometimes it's a really big ask, right? And typically it comes after they've made a promise to see you or to meet with you in person. Um, but then all of a sudden they, they'll claim they're in trouble or they have an amazing investment opportunity that they just need a little bit of funding for. Um, And the key here, though, is that there's always an excuse after the ask of why they can't come meet you in person always. So that's a really big red flag right there. Um, But a a few other things to be mindful of if you're kind of starting to question the legitimacy of an online relationship that you're in is things might be moving really fast. So if someone you've just met online starts saying that they love you after only a few conversations, that's a huge red flag. Um, If their profiles are really vague, um, that can be another red flag, right? If it doesn't include a lot of personal details or it seems too good to be true, it probably is. A lot of times they will use... um, pictures of like men in uniform when they're trying to talk to women um, or really younger women when they're trying to talk to men to scam money out of men. So just be kind of mindful of even the imagery that they're using in their profile pictures is going to be really misleading. Um, And of course, that request for money, the moment someone asks you for money that you have never met in person, have only ever had online communication with, um, you should be extremely suspicious extremely suspicious and maybe even stop speaking to them because it's a very clear red flag of a romance scam. Um, Some of the things that you can do to really protect yourself in a situation like this, though, is make sure that you're taking things slow in online relationships and don't share too much personal information too soon because the more information you give them, the more information they now have to turn it back to you and manipulate you further to believe what they're trying to get you to believe and trust them, right? Um, it, and but going back to that profile picture, if you, you can do things like a reverse image search to verify if that profile picture is real or if it's been used on other accounts because a lot of times they'll use the same picture over and over again. Um, And always, always, always meet in person before you start getting too emotionally invested in a relationship so that you can truly know who it is that you're having a relationship with. Um, And if you've already been scammed, 
immediately stop communication with that scammer if they haven't already cut you off. Make sure that you report the profile to the dating site or the social media platform that where you met on so that it can be shut down and no one else can be taken advantage of. And then, of course, contact your bank if you send them any money. Um, in some cases, they might be able to reverse charges, but in a lot of cases, probably not because you okay. authorize the transaction. Um, so, but it's still important to get with them, make sure, you know, especially if you shared any other personal details, social security number, or you gave them your credit card information, anything like that, make sure you get that, um, taken care of immediately. And I know it can be really, um, embarrassing to have to do that, but trust me, you know, especially here at the credit union, if you've been in that situation, we get it. It's, it happens to a lot of people and we've helped people through it before. And we definitely are not going to judge you for that. We want to get you back on track and make sure that your account is safe. Moving yeah. Forward. There's worse things than embarrassment. That's for yes, sure. Exactly. It makes me long for the days before the internet. <laughs> there was plenty of scams back then too. They just looked yeah. different. Yeah. They, it was harder to get you, to you, I think. All right, we have to take a break. We'll be back with more discussion about frauds and scams with Jenna Tubble with First Alliance Credit Union in a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tubble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking Good Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves on News Talk, 1340 KROC AM, 96.9 FM. We're talking about fraud and scams today, how to protect yourself, how to recognize them. Jenna Tobble with First Alliance Credit Union. And uh, Jenna, earlier you mentioned another common scam is the tech support scam, which yeah. I have been targeted by numerous times what's mm -hmm. what's the deal with those things <laughs> yeah yeah tech support scams um come in many varieties but i think the one that is most important to talk about today and this actually happened to someone i know very recently um what these are is something will pop up on your computer when you're on a website um or sometimes there might even be a phone call involved like claiming that your device is infected with a virus like these again these can kind of happen in a couple different ways but essentially the scammer will ask for remote access to your computer to help fix the issue or if it's on the computer they it might be a pop-up that says you know download this thing to you know protect your computer or to run something I, you know there's all kinds of words that they'll use to get you to do it but when they do that it usually installs malware on your computer or if the, if you're giving them remote access over the computer they'll all they'll find a way to install that malware as well so again there's a couple different ways that this one can show up and trick you but i think some really good ways to protect yourself from this type of scam particularly is one just never give remote access to someone who contacts you unexpectedly um, if you see a pop-up on a website, don't click on anything, just close it. Um, if you need to restart your computer and then you can contact like a legitimate tech support service to help you if you are having issues with your computer. Um, and then just be really cautious when you're searching for help online. Some scammers pay for ads that look like legitimate tech support sites. Um, so if you have fallen victim to these tech support scams, you know, make sure that you disconnect your computer from the internet, change your passwords for online accounts from a different device, um, contact, you know, an actual tech professional so that they can help get rid of any malware or spyware that has been installed on your computer. Um, and in some cases they may again have deleted, some of your files or some of your pictures or and they may have to be more work done to recover some of that if possible um and again these types of scams come up in so many different ways it's hard to talk about all of them in a short amount of time but it, just be very wary of anyone who asks you to install something or get access on your computer yep and you you know you think your google passwords are safe but if you give them remote access 
Mm-hmm. Guess what? Yeah. They, you just yeah. gave them access to all your passwords. Yes, exactly. That's a great point. Okay. Credit card scams. This is the one that keeps me awake at night. Yeah. How do yeah. they get your information and what do they do with it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scammers can get your credit card information in a handful of ways through data breaches, um, through phishing emails, through skimming devices on ATMs. Um, and once they have your card um, information, they can then make all kinds of unauthorized purchases with it. So a really great way to protect yourself from this these types of scams is to just make sure you're regularly monitoring your credit card statements um, for unfamiliar charges so that you're very aware of what's going on on your credit account. Um, if you use your card online frequently, make sure that you're using really strong passwords and enable two-factor authentication for online accounts so people can't access your card through that information. Um, if you do start to see unauthorized charges on your card, you know, it can be really helpful to have um, a card control app installed and have your card um, information stored there so that you can turn your card on and off and even set spending limits. So that way, if somebody does get a hold of your card, they aren't able to just go on a wild shopping spree and spend large amounts of money. You can kind of control the damage a little bit. Um, First Alliance offers this for within our online banking account where you can turn your cards on and off and you get alerts as soon as there's a transaction on that card. Um, So if you have been scammed, regardless of how you find out about it, you know, make sure that you immediately report that fraud to your bank or credit union. Um, The nice thing about credit cards is they do have some fraud protection options built into them and you may be able to get your funds back in some cases if you report it quickly enough. Um, and they can, of course, then cancel the existing card and issue a new one so that additional charges don't start to rack up. Um, and they can help you dispute those unauthorized charges and even start a fraud investigation with you. So, And I recently took steps to prevent this by freezing my credit reports. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah, that's a great option too. Then they can't open new credit in your, under your name. That's great. Okay. Also, lottery scams or you know the prize scam business Mm -hmm. maybe you could quickly run through that how that works yeah so these are where someone claims you've won something but there's always a catch you have to pay taxes up front or fees up front um and these scammers are really preying on people's excitement about something um if you're told that you've won a prize and you need to pay for something to claim it it is a hundred percent a scam no one will do that so the best way to protect yourself from this is that, you know, legitimate prizes or in lotteries are not going to ask for any kind of payment up front to claim that reward. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And if you didn't try to win something in the first place, you it would be shocking to win something, right? So if you didn't put your name in the hat to win a vacation from something, how are you winning a vacation? Yeah. Just, I mean, common, you know, common things to think about. It's really easy to be like, oh, my God, I'm winning something, you know. But just remember, if it's too good to be true, it is. Um, if you have been scammed by something like this, stop all communication with that scammer. Report it to the Federal Trade Commission. If you have sent money, contact your bank or your credit card company or your credit union immediately to see if any of those charges can be reversed. Again, it's not always likely, especially if you authorize that transaction to happen. Um, so just be very mindful that just if you get scammed, you may not get your funds back because you, a lot of times you do authorize those transactions. Yeah, unfortunately. Good yeah. information. And uh, hopefully people are digesting this and protecting themselves. Yeah. Just because being aware is probably your best protection. A hundred percent. Yeah. The more informed you are, the less likely you are to fall victim to a scam you know, if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And just be really cautious and trust your instincts and always just double check a trusted source if something feels off. And if, if especially when it comes to things like those um, phone scams where someone pretends to be a family member or a romance scam, like trust your gut. If something just doesn't seem right, trust it. Ask questions. Great advice, of course, Jenna. <laughs> and of course, I'm sure there's a lot more information available out there. 
mm-hmm. ironically, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So could you point us in the direction where we can learn more to make good money moves? Yes. As always, I encourage our listeners to visit our legitimate website, firstalliancecu.com. <laughs> Subscribe to our blog. We release new financial tips and advice there regularly. You can listen to past episodes of this show at firstalliancecu.com slash podcast or on krocnews.com. You can also subscribe to Good Money Moves on Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, and Spotify. And as always, I encourage you to reach out to our team at First Alliance Credit Union. They are here to help you start making good money moves today. That's First Alliance Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA and an equal housing lender. Thanks a lot, Jenna. I look forward to next week. Absolutely. It's Good Money Moves on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.